Good morning, good afternoon, welcome on in everyone. I am your host today, Kermit, and this is my brand new podcast that I like to call Frog Talk, where you get to talk with me, Kermit, because I am a frog. So, I guess, uh, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. So, I guess before we get into everything that I have planned for today's podcast, uh, we should go over, you know, what I plan to do on this podcast, what you can expect to see on this podcast. Um, so the first one being that on this podcast, we are, I'm legit going to be talking about the most random stuff. Um, so like, you know, talk about stuff that has to do with gaming, uh, movies, TV shows, anime, you know, you name it, the whole shebang, the whole nine yards, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I have that planned. And, you know, another plan of mine for this podcast is, you know, I'm hoping to possibly have some guests on here, VR chat content creators, uh, bring them on the show, pick their brains, uh, per se, you know, get to know them, get to, get to learn more about them, you know, and get their take on, you know, VR content in general, what's it, what it's like being a VR content creator and such. Um, another thing I like to do is to bring, is to hopefully be able to bring on some VR chat world owners and, you know, get their take on what it is that inspired them to make the world that they made. And, uh, you know, just get through just pick their brain too about you know what it's like making a world for vr chat and you know possibly find out you know what are some future plans they have uh for their uh for their world and uh yeah that's essentially you know what i have planned for this podcast if you know if the, it, this podcast works out, people enjoy it, and, you know, want some more, then, you know, um, I will definitely try and bring some more people on here to possibly, you know, pick their brains about, uh, cause, you know, I want to pick some brains, I want to get to know some people, you know, um, so, I guess the first thing on the, uh, on my, you know, podcast I do want to talk about is, we're going to start with some gaming topics because, you know, I, I went on looking online, you know, what is going on in the gaming community and such. And I found one apparently on a game rant talking about how Xbox is teaming up with IHOP. Freaking IHOP? I mean, to be honest, I never imagined Xbox would team up with IHOP. Um, but apparently, from what Game Rant is ta- is you know talking about, Xbox has announced a partnership with the breakfast chain IHOP ahead of the release of Indiana Jones in the Great Circle. I forgot. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of forgot about that game too. Um, I don't know if by the time this comes out, if the game's already come out. Um, if it did, I do hope the game has been doing phenomenal um, in the gaming community. Um, if not, then you know I I hope everyone is excited to play the game, be Indiana Jones, go adventuring, go travel, find treasure, say it belongs in a museum. You know. Whatever Indiana Jones does, look, look, I may be a frog, I may be Kermit, but trust me, even I'm not caught up with uh, Indiana Jones and such like that. Um, but apparently, uh, it's supposed to be a uh, ahead of release of the Indiana Jones Great Circle. Uh, fans of both pancakes and gaming will have a chance to snag some exclusive Xbox-themed prizes and deals a limited time Indiana Jones Great Circle menu will also be available as part of the partnership. So, I mean, from what it sounds like, it sounds like you'll be able to, you know, read a menu that's in uh, Indiana Jones inspired, uh, which, I mean, hey, it seems pretty cool. It seems pretty interesting. You know, go into IHOP, just, excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to look at that menu. And, you know, Open that menu, bada bing, you got Indiana Jones right on that menu, which is, I'm not going to lie, that's kind of interesting, kind of funny, uh, in, in a sense, to be quite honest, because, I mean, I mean, who, you, you wouldn't, ima- you wouldn't, you know, think to go inside IHOP, and then, you know, you look at the menu to, you know, to look at what you want for breakfast, 
And then lo and behold, you have Indiana Jones looking right at you, essentially giving you that look like, what pink sake are you going to buy today, boy? I mean, come on now. I mean, I can't be the only one that thinks that's kind of funny. I mean, it's very random, to be quite honest. Um, you know, IHOP and Xbox collaborating on that. You know, there are there are a bunch of collaborations that are funny. Some that are just so random. Some that, that actually needed to happen. And, you know, some of them worked out. Some of them not. Some of them still confusing to this day, to be quite honest. Um, well... Well, not every console has officially has an official breakfast partner. This isn't the first time these two companies have collaborated. In 2022, IHOP offered a free month of Game Pass Unlimited, among other re uh, rewards, for customers who signed up for the Pancakes House loyalty program. Players who missed out on that chance now have another opportunity to get rewards for their breakfast buying habits. Wait, so they've done a collaboration before? What? How am I just now learning about that? How did I not know about that before? Um, also, I guess I should say, you know, if you do want to read the full article, I will leave uh, links to the articles that I am essentially reading over uh, down in the description below. So um, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, that's where you can find the article so you can read it yourself. Um, you know, support Game Rant, because, you know, this is where I'm getting my info right now, because uh, I don't keep up with everything. <laughs> um, but anyway, they've done a collaboration before. When have they... I honestly do not recall them ever doing a collaboration before, which, I'm, but I mean, that's pretty cool, the fact that they've done a collaboration before in the past. Huh. Well, how about that? Okay, so it's not the first time for these guys. All right. So they're continuing on, essentially, the trend of, you know being partners and doing a collaboration. So what was the 2022 collaboration then? Um, oh, okay. So, okay. This does answer my question from before on when Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones game does come out. Uh, it does say I hope will, uh, will roll out its Indiana Jones theme menus on November 18th to kick off its latest deal with Xbox. But the promotion doesn't stop there as with its 2022 partnership, customers can earn a pan coins from their breakfast purchase to spend on IHOP's digital marketplace. Stock market potential prizes, including a month of Game Pass Unlimited, full game downloads, gaming accessories, pretty much from what it seems like anything gaming related, you will be able to win a reward for this uh, collaboration that is going on. So there you go, everyone. November... November 18th, you can go to IHOP. Oh my god, my voice cracked. You can go to IHOP and potentially get a menu with Indiana Jones on it and essentially have them look right at you and just wondering what kind of pancake you're going to buy. I mean, what kind of pancakes do y'all get? All right. What what kind of pancakes do y'all get? Do y'all do y'all get some like just plain pancakes, uh blueberry pancakes? Um what are the, what other pancakes are there? I actually, I really don't know what other pancakes there are. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, like, different style pancakes that you can get at IHOP. Um, so, I mean, I mean, just tell me. L let me know in the comments, uh, what kind of, what kind of, what's your breakfast, uh, you know, what's your breakfast craving when you go to IHOP? Um, but yeah, apparently, so that, you see, yeah, apparently that's what's going on, uh, in terms of, uh, apparently Xbox and IHOP. Um, doing their uh, collaboration. Apparently, that's what's going on with IHOP and Xbox. Apparently, they're doing that kind of collaboration. Which, I mean, again, it's pretty. That's pretty cool that IHOP and Xbox are doing this. I mean, shoot. I guess ne I guess I'm gonna have to make a make a plan to go to IHOP then. Get myself a uh, a Indiana Jones uh, themed menu to uh, you know open it up and see Indiana Jones on it. Wondering what kind of pancakes I'm gonna get. So that's cool. All right. Um. Let me see what else we got. Um, I guess we can, uh, you know, actually, you know, speaking, you know, we can move on to a, uh, to a pretty funny topic. So, scary movie. The the everyone knows scary movie because everyone loves a good scary movie horror parody. I mean, who can who can not say they don't like a parody movie? Parody movies back then were were absolutely funny. They were hilarious. You know, you can flip on them. You can flip on, you know, the TV or streaming services, whatever, wherever you can watch um, your uh, your your movie parody. 
I mean, you got parodies of Spider-Man, X-Men. Um, you got the horror based uh, parodies uh, like Scary Movie. And, you know, it was announced not that long ago that apparently Scary Movie 6 is coming is going to be coming out and is going to be uh, the next project with the Wayne Brothers. The Wayne Brothers are thankfully coming back to, uh, you know, I believe direct uh, direct the movie or make the movie. I can't remember what it was, but I remember hearing that the Wayne Brothers are coming back to uh, work on the sixth installment of the Scary Movie franchise, which is freaking awesome. Um, but apparently, Scary Movie 6 uh, update confirms one horror icon is returning. Um, so I'm kind of curious on, you know, when they say horror icon, do they mean like, you know, do they mean like uh, horror, like horror villain wise, essentially like, you know, are we, are they bringing back Ghostface? Are they bringing back, you know, one of these survivors that they've usually brought back every now and then? Um, like, like Sydney. I, I, yeah, Sydney's her name. Yeah. They always brought Sydney back. Um, in almost every movie, I mean, hey, the actress it, did a phenomenal job playing Sydney. She did a great job, you know, playing the character. Um, but apparently, uh, I can, I'm not going to pronounce the last name. I cannot pronounce the last name for the life of me. Uh, but Dave has confirmed the return of a legendary horror icon for Scary Movie 6. The successful series, film series began with Scary Movie in 2000, a comedy horror that parodied uh, iconic slashers and horror movies from years past. A box office success, the movie earned $278 million against its uh, production budget of $19 million and spawned four sequels, That la uh, the latest of which was 2013 Scary Movie 5, the Scary Movie Reboot, is set for a 2025 release with some of the uh, with some of the franchise's legend legacy characters expected to return. Wait, so th is this essentially just a reboot? Up, uh, up essentially, um, I I thought this was a you know legit going to be a sixth installment, but I I guess I guess uh sixth installment or uh reboot. I guess technically it would still be the same, um, because I mean it would it would be the sixth installment of the franchise, but it's also a reboot. So I, I guess technically it makes sense. I guess technically that does make some sense then. But apparently while speaking with YouTuber Crazy Dog 500 via Collider, Dave revealed that the legendary Ghostface is confirmed to be returning to this uh, scary movie franchise. Dave portrayed the, char uh, the character in the original movie and continued continues to admitting that the only detail he can confirm about the upcoming Scary Movie 6 is the return of Ghostface. Okay, so okay, so we are getting Ghostface back. Ghostface is coming back to slash slash up some parody movies yet again. So, Dave, good job for you for being able to, you know, come back as Ghostface. Ghostface? Ghostface? And, you know, give us that kind of information because everyone that's seen the scary movies or are just, I know, are dying to, you know, find out more info on, you know, what, what are we getting out of, out of this scary, out of this new scary movie? Like, what can we expect? Like, how much of a reboot are, can we really expect happening in this, uh, in this movie? So, I mean, it definitely, that at least does give us some kind of info on what we can expect. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. I think that food's starting to creep up on me that I had earlier. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, that's, that's at least some good info that we can get um, in terms of like what we can somewhat expect for the uh, upcoming scary movie. Uh, yeah, technically scary movie movie. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, he mentioned how the uh, how franchise co-creator Marlon Wayne posted a picture of the original a original mask used in the first movie before continuing that the movie will would follow the franchise's scream timeline uh check out a uh, day's full comments uh, comments below all right so here so i'm i'm guessing this is what uh dave had to say about a uh, this was his comment um dave had to say the only thing i can 100% tell you is that ghostface will return for scary movie 6 marlon wayne already confirmed that that by taking a photo with Ghostface, and that is 
not me in that photo. From what I know of the original script, it did fall in line with what Scary Movie did did with really following the story of the Scream franchise. So this would be like Scream 5 and 6. All right, okay, I see, I see, Dave. I think I understand, Dave. Okay, I think I see where Dave is coming from, okay. So essentially, you know, it's not going to be... I guess it is technically going to follow that line that the other scary, scary movies, not scary movies, Scream did uh, entail, uh, you know, do. So, I mean, so we essentially could be seeing, uh, you know, a sequel to Scary Movie 1, essentially. So it could just be like a reboot, just like how Halloween uh, rebooted its franchise by the uh, newest uh, Halloween that I think it was from 2018 or 2019. Um, it came out as just Halloween, but it was a continuation of the original Halloween movie from way back then, so it could just be rebooting it right back to Scary Movie 2, but changing the story to follow in line with the Scream franchise, maybe. So, I mean, that's, that could be what we could be expecting. Um, I mean, I definitely will watch it and go out and, and see it. You know, see, uh, go watch with my froggy eyes on how good this movie is. Um, so that, that's, that's, gonna, that, that's actually good to look forward to. I can't wait to s learn more about, you know, what's going on in the Scary Movie franchise and, uh, find out what else we can expect in terms of, you know, this movie. Um, and speaking of movies, um, speaking of movies, Venom, now, apparent, now I haven't really seen you know, the newest Venom movie. The last Venom movie I saw was uh, Venom 2. But apparently, Venom The Last Dance uh, box office officially passes Sony's Oscar-winning 2018 Marvel movies entire gross in just three weeks, which I'm very shocked at because I thought the movie didn't do too well. I thought the movie did very poorly. Um... So I'm actually a little shocked by that, but apparently, uh, from uh, what Screen Rant had to say, um, that that uh, yeah, like I said, I will post links to these uh to these articles if y'all just want to go read them without hearing me talk about it. Um, but apparently, from what Screen Rant had to say, um, Venom: The Last Dance box office run run has now led to the movie passing a major superhero film from Sony. Uh, Tony, uh, I was about to say Tony, Tom Hardy's, uh, Venom movies are the most popular and successful and, uh, successful ent uh, entries in Sony Spider-Man universe. I mean, to be fair, uh, they, it's not, that's not wrong, you know, so I'm not gonna lie, Sony has done, hasn't done that well when it comes to the Spider-Man movies, uh, at least what they're doing with the Spider-Man universe, um, you know, I heard Madam Web Madam Madam Web didn't do too good. Um Madam Web didn't do too good. That apparently that was all over the place. Um there was also Morbius that, you know, was mainly loved just because of all the memes people got out of that. Um especially uh Matt Smith's uh, dance that he did in the film. Here it is in all its uh, gloriousness of Matt Smith dancing. Good job, Matt. <laughs> Again, that's if my editor put put something like there. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I mean, so far from what I've seen from a, at least Sony movies I've watched uh, that has to do with Spider-Man, you know, the only movies, uh, uh, Spider-Man movies from Sony that I've enjoyed so far is Venom One. Venom One, you know, did an amazing job. Um, it did it did a, a great job. At least in my opinion, it did a great job. You know, uh, showing you know Venom without spider-man um because i mean at least from what i've always seen you know venom always goes it uh, goes after spider-man first and then it latches on to eddie brock um but instead this time you know it was eddie brock uh, who got the venom uh suit who got to venom first um but yeah you know venom one was pretty good and then you know we got venom uh, venom two uh i think what was it venom uh, venom let there be carnage uh, you know, that, I've seen that one, that was alright, it wasn't, you know, my favorite, I mean, it could have been better, um, but, I mean, you know, it, it was alright, it was decent, at least, um, but yeah, you know, we got that, and then, you know, you got, we got Venom's, uh, Venom, The Last Dance, that one I have not yet seen, um, 
But, you know, I mean, I've heard mixed things on that, but me personally, I'd rather go see it before, you know, giving my opinion on something. Um, unless, you know, you know, you got the whole fan base saying it's absolutely, you know, doo-doo water. Um, but, I mean, hey, you know, Sony's doing what they can do. Um, you know, there's that, but then there is also uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Those movies have done absolutely beautiful. Those movies are absolutely beautiful. The animation is phenomenal. Everyone that works on that film has done an incredible job, you know, putting, uh, making that movie come to life. Um, so, you know, shout out to, uh, to all the, to the cast and crew and animators, writers, everyone that works on those Spider-Man films. Hats off to you. You know, if I have a hat, I take it off for y'all. Um, cause y'all, y'all absolutely doing a, an amazing job, you know, you know, doing all that. Um, anyway, back on track and what we we're talking about, um, you know, um, but apparently, you know, as such, it was expected that uh, Van the Last Dance would be able to surpass the criticized uh, SSU films like uh, Morbius and Madam Web. Hey, I was just talking about that, you know. Um, as they did not, you know, do too well uh, in the box office. Uh, that has uh, that has come true with many uh, symbiotes in Venom The Last Dance helping the movie climb the box office and the Sony Marvel films uh, film has now beaten a Spider-Man movie. Oh, apparently, according to date from box office uh, Mojo, Venom The Last Dance has beaten Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse at the box office after only three weeks. Tom Hardy's final Venom movie has a worldwide total of Three hundred and ninety-six point four million against the first Spider-Man movie that apparently did three hundred ninety-three point six million. My God, I'm okay. I'm actually surprised by that. I never would have thought, um, you know, Venom, any of the Venom, Venom films, or you know, just any non like a you know Spider-Man in a, in the film, you know, actually beating a Spider-Man film, especially that one. I'm actually shocked by that. That's actually incredible. That's very shocking, to say the least. Um, so you know, I mean, hey, Tom Hardy, good job, man. Um, I I bet you're you know very happy that your uh, last Venom film, did uh, you know did beat Spy a Spider Man into the Spider Verse film. So I mean, hey, congrats to you. Um, but yeah, that's actually impressive. My God, my hands all shaky. It's hard. It's hard to like hit hit the exit button. Uh, on my little window right here. Um, but I mean, you know, so apparently that's what's going on in the movie industry. Uh, you know, again, congrats to Venom The Last Dance for, you know, beating Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, uh, during its, uh, uh, three weeks, uh, you know, out there. So three weeks in the box office. Congrats to y'all. I am very proud of y'all. Sorry about that. I, I, I wanted to move my camera because I'm like looking down. So it looks like I'm looking right at, right at y'all. Um, but yeah, so, so but yeah, congrats to, you know, Tom Hardy and, you know, everyone that's, that's worked on the Venom The Last Dance, uh, film, uh, congrats to y'all, uh, on beating, uh, one of the, you know, what I say is, uh, one of the, you know, a, a great Spider-Man film, so congrats to y'all, um, but you know, what else is going, here's what else was going on, you know, in, 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 uh, in, you know, in the, in life right now, um, so we have, it is getting close to the end of the year. We have December. Uh, we still have just December left. Um, but apparently but we have a, we have the streamer awards that is coming up and it's been announced on who the run, who the nominees for the best VTuber award, uh, can go to. Um, we have four runner ups. Um, we have Iron Mouse. I am not surprised by that. I am Iron Mouse you know, has done a incredible job in her community. She has been doing a fantastic job uh, with everything that she has been doing. Um, she just recently had a subathon, um, which was raising money for I can't remember for the life of me what the uh, what it is that she has, but uh, but she was uh, you know raising money to uh, donate to that charity that is trying to. Find a find a cure, I believe, uh, for what she has. Because from my understanding, she she has something where she can't, uh, you know, go out and you know do stuff. She's basically homebound, uh, 
uh, and is stuck at home and isn't able to, you know, go go outside and, you know, do all these things. Um, hence why, you know, uh, if you see her, if you see her like uh, in public, she's she's typically on the uh, computer, uh, like TV screen um, at cons and all these events that go on. Um, so, I mean, uh, I'm not too surprised by Iron Mouse being on here. I mean, she like she, like I said, she's a phenomenal person. She definitely does deserve it. Um, but we have her. We have Doki Bird. Um, now, I don't know much about Doki Bird. I've I've seen her a few times on Twitch. Uh, she, she, I've seen her content, her con, like some of the content I've seen off TikTok are hilarious. Um, you know, uh, so, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not too surprised on her being on here. Um, um, and then we have Zentreya, uh, the cy- uh, cyborg VTuber. I, I believe she's a cyborg VTuber. I, I'm not too like familiar with the, uh, you know, VTuber lore essentially. Um, but apparently, Zentreya has a has been nominated for the best VTuber award. So congrats to you, Zentreya. Um, and then we have Vettel. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, Vettel. Um, I don't know much about him. I've seen him e- every now and then, mainly to do with a uh, Neurosama. Um, apparently, he's like a uh, I believe he's like a um, a turtle VTuber. Um, I don't know for sure, but, but I mean, that's what, that's how I've always seen him is as a turtle. Uh, so Vettel, congrats to you being a nominee for the best VTuber award for 2024. Um, I don't know when the streamer award is going on. So, I mean, uh, so by the time this comes out, which I'm hoping is by the, before the end of uh, this month, um, you know, best of luck to everyone who is, you know, going to be, uh, who has been nominated for the best VTuber award. Best of luck to y'all. Uh, you all, uh, from what I've always seen, y'all, you all, you know, have done incredible things. Y'all have done amazing uh, content. Y'all have done, y'all, y'all are just making people's day. Um, so best of luck to each and every one of you, um, on the, uh, on the streamer award. Um, Speaking of VTuber, apparently, the, apparently, so, so, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, Iron Mouse, you know, she recently, not the, I think like maybe a month ago, she beat Kai Sinat's, uh, sub record, uh, on her subathon, on her subathon, summer, subathon, I can't speak apparently, but she beat Kai Sinat's subathon, uh, record, which congrats to Iron Mouse for doing that, but then recently Kai Sinat is doing, I think it's called a Mafiathon. Um, but he's recently, uh, started doing a subathon, um, and I just found out, uh, by the time I am recording this, uh, he just beat, uh, Iron Mouse's, uh, subathon record, uh, within, I think, at least three weeks or 11 days or something like that. I can't remember, but, uh, apparently Kai Snat just beat her record. Uh, so Kai Snat, congrats to you, my friend. Um, you know, uh, I seen on Twitter, you know, uh, Iron Mouse congratulating him on his, uh, accomplishment on beating, uh, her record, uh, as he did for her whenever he, her, whenever she beat his record, yeah, his record. Um, but apparently, apparently people are wanting to throw shade at Iron Mouse. Now, I don't, now, now hear me out, guys. I don't understand what it is about people that want to bash VTubers, um, and such. I mean, you know, if it's not for you, you know, I can totally understand that. You know, watching a person, uh, you know, essentially, you know, take on a persona, uh, or just be themselves, but with a anime, you know, figure, then, you know, that's not for you. I can, I can totally understand that. But pe- apparently people are throwing shade at Iron Mouse, apparently saying like, uh, you know, you know, how can, how can you, how can you like this or how can you donate money to this? You know, it, the thing is, why, why must, why must people, you know, throw hate towards, uh, you know, people that are doing, you know, amazing things and, you know, raising the money for something good. You know, I don't understand that. It makes no sense. Um, you know, I mean, I may never, uh, you know, figure that out. I I may never know why that is. Um, you know, the only thing I can, you know, say is, you know, I just, I can just wish that, you know, sometime in the future, you know, we can get on to a, a, you know, 
a world where people didn't hate someone for something they love. So, you know, it's more like I'm just trying to say, I wish there was more, you know, spreading happiness than hate. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of hard if, from what I've seen nowadays. But, I mean, that's just me. Uh, at the end of the day, both both streamers are doing what they love doing. You got Iron Mouse, uh, who prefers to, you know, uh, be herself uh, with a VTuber avatar. Um, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, behind the avatar, she is still a human being. She is doing what she loves. She enjoys it. That's all that matters, you know? Kai Sinead, same same thing. He's a person. He's doing what he loves. Um, and, you know, all all to it, man. At the end of the day, everyone is doing what they enjoy doing. Um, but yeah, so like like I said, uh, back you know back to what I was saying about the st uh, streamer award. You know, best of luck to e best of luck to everyone uh, who has been nominated on the streamer awards. Um, so yeah. Um, but also, apparently, the EA boss is, the EA boss apparently could be jumping ship to Disney. Apparently. Um, apparently the, uh, actually, you know what, I probably shouldn't talk about this. Now that I think about it, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Um, we'll talk about something else. <laughs> we'll talk about the Sonic movie. Sonic the Head. You know what? I'll talk about that EA thing later. I'll talk about that. I'm an independent frog. I, 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 I ought to talk about what, what I want to talk about. It's my frog cast. We are here to just talk about whatever, you know? Um, but apparently the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 director confirms new characters will be teased for potential sequel. Now, when I first read this, I, I didn't, I, I read it as new character, not characters. So that means there's going to be more than one character that's going to be introduced that's going to have, that could have a potential sequel. Which is actually pretty cool, because the Sonic movies have, have been doing absolutely great. They've been doing phenomenal um, as, you know, movies. I mean, you know, if we all remember back then, uh, that first trailer we got for Sonic the Hedgehog 1, uh, the way they had Sonic look, oh my god, that, that looked horrible. Ugly Sonic looked horrible, man. Like, I mean, come on, how do you mess up, you know, a video game character like that? You know, if you were able to make the character look like one thing, why would you make it look like another thing? You know what I mean? But yeah, apparently, but apparently Sonic 3's director, Jeff Fowler, I believe I'm pronouncing that name right? Um... Apparently, Jeff Fowler hints at what teases uh, teases will be given in the upcoming movie. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is the sequel to 2022 Sonic the Hedgehog 2, obviously, if we couldn't tell, um, which continues to tell the story about the classic se uh, Sega characters. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 features a leading cast, including Ben Schwartz, uh... I, I cannot pronounce the name, so I apologize for not pronouncing the last name. Colleen uh, Idrius Elba. I'm actually I'm actually surprised I nailed that name down. I, I feel like I can never name his name down for whatever reason. Um, Keanu Reeves. Uh, Tika Sump Sumpter. Sumpter. I, again, I apologize. I'm probably butchering these names wrong, honestly. Uh, Tom Butler. Uh, Ayla... Aaliyah, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Brown. Uh, again, I apologize. Uh, James uh, Mars Marsden and Jim Carrey. God bless you, Jim Carrey. You absolute legend. Um, it is set to uh, set for release just before Christmas, coming out on November, uh, on December twentieth. Is it really coming out this year? Oh my God, man! Time has gone by very fast. You know. Uh, speaking of speaking with Entertainment Weekly, Fowler discussed uh, what potential teases will be at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. According to the director, he and his team have have similar conversation as fan debates online surround what characters the franchise could show next. They are found making great ease, oh, making great cases for it should be this one or that one. As for Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Fowler says that this movie is no different in terms of teasing new characters. 
characters. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, so see, I've been wondering, you know, what are the characters they're going to bring on, uh, you know, onto the, uh, you know, into the movie? Because we, because Sonic 3, ha- you know, has already shown that we are going to get Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, but of course, you know, I've seen online people are saying like, oh, well, it's going to be Amy. It's going to be this character. It's going to be this character. It's going to be that character. Um, but I mean, from what it sounds like, you know, it sounds like, you know, they do, they probably, they do have plans for, you know, sequels and stuff like that. Um, which I mean, it it's great. It's awesome. Um, cause like I said, the Sonic movies have been doing very good and I mean, I enjoy them. Uh, I've, I've not really heard anyone, you know, talk bad about the, you know, Sonic movies. So, I mean, they're doing, they're doing a uh, right by the character. Um, especially after the, uh, the whole, you know, ugly Sonic situation. Um, uh, but I mean, Hey, good for them. Uh, you know, I hope the movie, you know, comes out great. I hope it, you know, turns out phenomenal um for everyone and you know ex- it, i hope it exceeds everyone's ex- expectation um but if ter- in terms of the ea uh, boss uh, jumping to uh, disney apparently the walt disney company uh, may find its next leader in ea ceo andrew wilson with reports claiming the longtime gaming boss could step into the role of Bob Iger steps at, uh, steps down. The news comes as a discussion conti- uh, continues to swirl about the future of Disney, a company that has certainly seen its fair share of shifts over the last few years, notably within its own leadership, with many more changes coming within the next decade. EA owns Andrew Wilson... Uh, EA's own Andrew Wilson may very well oversee these changes as Disney is on the, uh, on the cups, I don't know, uh, of naming its next leader. Huh. So, so, so what I'm understanding is apparently, uh, you know, Bob Iger is planning to step down and is also, uh, and it's, and it's possible for Andrew Wilson to take over his spot. Um, cause if I'm correct, isn't Bob Iger the you know, you know, person in charge of Disney, if I'm correct, I could be wrong on that. Don't, don't come at me. Don't come at me. Uh, you know, I may, I may be a frog, but don't come at me. Don't come at me. I'm a forgetful frog. Okay. Um, EA is a giant, is a giant in the video game world, publishing some of the industry's leading brands like the Sims, which, Hey, the Sims, Phenomenal game. I heard apparently there's going to be a Sim 6, which, you know, I'm kind of curious on that, because, I mean, what more can you can you add to the Sim? Oh, God, my arm. Oh, my God. Oh, there we go. My God, my arm went discombobulated. Can I do it again? Let me do it again. Oh, I can't do it again. I, pr- I can't break my noodle arms. My noodle arms won't break. I really do have noodle arms, though. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like EA Sports and Battlefield and more recently EA backed BioWare's Dragon Age, the Valiant Guard, a game that has pro- uh, proven to be both popular and diverse. The controversy began brewing months before the Veil Guard's launch at the end of October, with the game acting as the first entry in the series since 2014's Dragon Age Inquisition, however, the future of EA is uncertain. With the Walt Disney Company reportedly looking into uh, looking to the gaming company's own boss as its next CEO. Huh. Okay. So, so is so I'm guessing it's Disney that's wanting to bring uh, Andrew onto a uh, you know its CEO position. Apparently, if, that, if that's what I'm understanding, that's what it sounds like. Um, apparently, Andrew is being eyed for the job of Disney's next CEO. Okay, so yeah, it's essentially everything I just uh, I just uh, read. Um, huh, so that's so that's fairly interesting. Having a a game a boss that's uh, that that led a gaming company be in charge of you know um, the biggest the biggest company out there, Disney. Which I mean, 
Disney owns just about everything, which is insane. It's in, it's crazy how much Disney owns. Uh, like they own Fox. They own. Uh, I, th- I think they own like sports. Uh, I believe they also own Hulu. Uh, but there's like a lot of things that Disney owns. There's there's that. There it is. There's my food coming back up. My God, Jesus. Well, that's that's pretty insane. Um. But, I mean, hey, if Andrew becomes the next CEO of Disney, you know, hey, my man, best of luck to you. I mean, you got a lot that you're going to have to do, um, you know, with Disney being so big. So, best of luck to you, my friend. Um, but, yeah, that that's, that's incredible, man. Incredible, but also funny. It's like, cause you, you know, you think of, you know, a boss, um, you know, for a big company like Disney. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you wouldn't, I mean, a gaming boss, a game company boss, that's not usually the first person I think of to take over something like Disney. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely, you know, interesting on, you know, the route they're, they're thinking of taking, but I mean, Hey, you know, if it works for them, it works for them. Um, you know, whatever works is what matters. Um, and honestly, that's just about everything I, I had on here to discuss. Um, you know, I had Arcane Season 2 to talk about, but I'm pretty sure by the time this comes out, you know, um, it's already going to be um, a little late, because I'm pretty sure by the time, you know, this comes out, everything eh, everything Arcane, eh, all the Arcane episodes would be out already. Um, but again, you know, if everyone, you know, by the time this comes out, I hope everyone enjoyed Arcane Season 2, because, I mean, hey, for me right now, so far I've seen Act 1, because Act One's the only thing that's come out so far, um, and Act 1 was absolutely incredible, I mean, my god, everyone, everyone that that's working on Arcane have been doing a phenomenal job on that, you know, down, uh, down from the animation to the voice acting to the writing to the music, my god, dude, the music is is freaking beautiful. Uh, a- uh, Ashes and Blood by Woodkid, that that song was was absolutely beautiful. I love that song. I can't get enough of it. And then you got the song Sucker, that's also a amazing song. Those are like so far out of the songs that have come out. Those are by far my two favorite songs uh, to listen to. I've been listening to those uh, pretty much on repeat almost every day uh, since they came out. Um, but you know, um, you know, I'm excited to watch you know Act Two, which does come out uh, this Saturday at least when I'm recording this. Um, you know, so that so I can't wait for that. That is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be amazing. Um, and then. And then in other news, Gajil's voice actor, Gajil from Fairy Tale, his voice, his English voice actor, is apparently leaving Crunchyroll um, because of some, I, I think it, it's some abuse that's going on uh, behind the scenes. I don't know much because by the time I'm recording this, uh, I haven't seen a reveal on what it is. I haven't seen on what it is that's making him want to leave. Um, but apparently his voice actor is leaving and got... And, Gajio's voice actor, he has been voicing that character since the since the day Gajio came onto the show. Um, so, and with the 100 year quest, you know, still going on, you know, that means we aren't going to see Gajio. Um, and we're not going to hear uh, that voice uh, anymore. Um, so, I mean, whatever whatever the reason is for his leaving, you know, I am sorry that is happening to you. Um, you know, I wish best of luck for him on whatever he plans on doing next. Um, I mean, he's an incredible voice actor. I can't see, I don't, uh, I, I can't, I couldn't see him, you know, not doing, uh, getting any more roles. The man is a phenomenal uh, voice actor along with everyone else on fairy tale. So he, he will, uh, he will, uh, you know, find a new, a new role. Um, and I, I saw he has a Twitch. I didn't know he had a Twitch. Um, so, I mean, if he streams, then, my God, I mean, hey, man, I hope you have fun on your streams, because, I mean, I didn't even know the man streamed. I mean, shoot, um, uh, his name's Zach, Zach Aguilara, I believe, it, I believe it's his name, um, uh, but he's the voice actor for David Martinez and uh, Cyberpunk Edgerunners, but he also voices Tanjiro, uh, from Demon Slayer. 
I find I found out that he has a Twitch uh, a Twitch account too. He he also streams, which I did not know. Um, so I mean that's pretty cool that he's doing that. Um, so I mean, I mean I wish best of luck for uh, for the, whatever it is, Gajil's voice actors that voice actor is going to do next. Um, and it's like you know I I I I feel sorry for whatever it is he went through. Uh, in Crunchyroll. Um. I hope to find out what it is that happened because I, I don't know what happened. Like I said, I haven't heard about anything that's happened. Um, I just know that apparently, um, that's what's going on. Um, but yeah, um, I can't really think of anything else I wanted to talk about on today's episode. I mean, like I said, it, it's my, this is my first podcast. You know, I am, you know, I hope this uh, first episode goes very well. Um, I hope people enjoy it. Uh, cause I mean, if people enjoy it, then I'll definitely do another podcast. I'll definitely do another episode. Um, so I mean, Hey, I hope y'all love it. Uh, cause I, I plan on this, you know, being something I do for YouTube. Cause I mean, as you all seen on this channel, it's only just been Twitch vods. Um, so, I mean, so I'm kind of hoping this does well, too, because then this can be something just for YouTube, uh, something y'all can enjoy that's not a uh, Twitch VOD. And, yeah. Um, also, I, I mean, I hope I hope y'all love the my this little world that I found. Um, it took me a while to actually find a, a uh, podcast room. Um, but, of course, I, I ended up uh, going with this one because I can't it, it's kind of it's essentially like a talk show world. Um you know, you got you got my you got a chair right here that I can sit in. You got a guest couch right here, so a guest can sit right here. And you know, I can just you know just look, just be like this, and you know, just chatting with them and you know and such. Um, so I mean, yeah, like I said, I I do hope uh you know I can uh, possibly get someone on here. Um, I know a VR chat content creator I have in mind of getting in contact with to see if they would like to do a podcast with me. Um, but I mean. We'll have to see. We'll see how things go. Um, but yeah. Um, wait, can I actually play a video here? Oh, I can. All right. Well, we can. We can also. I can also play a video here too. I didn't know that. Apparently, we can do that. Let's go. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think I, I I think this is where I think this is a good place to you know stop and uh, end the first episode of the Frogcast. Um, I've gone over pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Um, in terms of everything I have on my notes, um, you know, EA's boss might jump ship to uh, Disney. Xbox is teaming up with IHOP yet again. Venom Three passes Sony's Sony's Oscar winning 2018 in just three weeks. Scary Movie 6 confirms one horror icon coming back. And Sonic 3's director confirms new character will be teased for a potential sequel. Which, I mean, all that is some great news, you know. And, I mean, like I said, you know, I, you know, on this podcast, I do plan on discussing anything gaming-related, movie-related, show-related, um, anime-related, or just anything random in general, even the VTuber space, I am going to, you know, try and, you know, discuss about what's going on on there. Um, but either way, you know, I want to thank you all for joining me in today's broadcast. You know, I, I hope y'all did enjoy it. Um, I do hope to come back here in my chair to talk, uh, talk to y'all about, uh, more things that are going on in today's world. Um, so, Thank you guys from the bottom of my froggy heart. Thank you guys so much for being here and joining me in today's episode. Um, if I do make another another podcast, um, it'll probably be next month or shoot, it might be the uh, might be next year. I don't know, one way or another. I hope to see. I hope y'all join me in the next episode of Frogcast. I'm your host Kermit. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all. Have a good day. Have a good night. I will see you guys in the in the next episode. Take it easy, guys.